Thank you for joining me today for Central Moments. We're walking through a two-week series out of the three chapters of Paul's letter to Titus. And as we press farther into chapter two, we're reminded that our theology and our ethics in the New Testament are always connected. And there's a few places that Paul does this more intentionally than the book of Titus. He's recently planted with Titus, he's planted a whole group of new churches throughout the island of Crete. He's now moved on, but he has left Titus to mature these churches, to appoint godly leadership for these churches, to strengthen these churches in the faith. And uh, in the process, he describes our faith in an incredible way and how it starts with the grace of God, but it, it ends with people eager to do what is good. And so he's constantly linking theology to ethics. So he, he does this in a sweeping way in Titus chapter 2, verse 11, where he starts, for the grace of God. He's been talking about good works. And he says, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. So, so this is the starting point. It's the grace of God that flows from the redeeming sacrifice of Jesus. And he says, this grace, when it comes to our present lives, will cause us to make decisions in two directions. Uh, in one direction, he says, it teaches us, God's grace teaches us, to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. So ungodliness would be those sin patterns in our lives. We, we live a lifestyle dominated by sin patterns and by keeping God at arm's length. He says, uh, say no to ungodliness and to worldly passions. Those are affections, are our affections. And often that's where it starts. Do you love what God loves or do you love what God hates? These are these sinful worldly passions and ungodly lifestyles. He said, the grace of God will teach us in one direction to say no to those things and in turn to say yes to a different way of living, to live a self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age because God's grace does impact our lifestyles in every way. And that, that idea of being self-controlled is to live under the control of the Holy Spirit. So instead of following godly passion, being controlled by sin, we live this self-controlled, this spirit-dominated life uh, of godliness, godly lives in the present age. And he's gonna pick up on that idea of the present age because right now we're in the present age, but the present age is not gonna last. He said, verse 13, we do this while we wait for the present hope. So we say no to certain things, we say yes to other things, all the while waiting for what he calls the blessed hope, blessed hope. And then he defines what the blessed hope is for us, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself up for us to redeem us from all unwickedness, to purify for himself a people that are his very own. That's good theology. And then he adds, eager to do what is good. That's the ethics. And all of this in light of the fact that this present age that we live in, dominated by sin, uh, is not gonna last, but rather Jesus is gonna come again. And he calls it blessed. Uh, he calls it the blessed hope, the blessed hope. He calls it blessed because Jesus is gonna win. <laughs> Jesus is gonna dominate. It's not evil, it's not injustice is gonna have the final word in our world it is going to be Jesus himself. So it's going to be a blessed day. That, that dominion of Jesus' life and spirit that can cause us to live differently than with worldly passions right now, someday will touch our whole world. So it's blessed. And it's a hope because it's still future. He calls it our blessed hope. And uh, if you already have it, it's not a hope. But this is still in the future. But what it does is strengthen our commitment to stay loyal and pure to Jesus right now. This is the blessed hope. We live in light of the fact, as we say no to sin and yes to righteousness, we live with this blessed hope that this present age is not eternal. It's temporary and Jesus is gonna come back, the blessed one, and, and we have hope as a result. Father, thank you for this. Thank you, help us not to put too much stock into this present age. Help us definitely not to follow its passions and its sin patterns, but help us to live self-controlled, godly, in love with you, passionate for you, until that day when you come again. In Jesus' name, amen.